Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM21 Builder Nation story from Bangor City with me, Daniel. It's part 58 today and we are back for our first Europa League group stage game. Our first ever one as well. We've played in the Europa Conference, we've played in the Champions League. We've never played in this one in between. So it's going to be a new experience and we've got a tough group. So we start against Villarreal as you can see and we'll go and have a look at our other opponents in a moment. As it happens though, the league season has started well. All of the usuals up the top. We've got Barrytown United recovering after last season and TNS and Carmarthen up there too. And we've also got a bit more transfer news at the end of the window. For the first time, we've been able to go domestic and start funding other clubs. So hopefully, that's something that will continue to happen moving forward. We'll be able to help those sides improve. We'll wait and see. But if you are looking forward to this episode and our debut in the Europa League group stages, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily content from two long-term stories. If you haven't seen yesterday's head coach yet, please do check it out. It promised to be one of the most dramatic ever episodes on this channel. And you can go and see just how it worked out for us. There's links to all the playlists in the eye above too. But we are back with lots of news at Bangor City. We're only going to show the one game today. Because there's a few questions from the comments in recent weeks I want to answer. So a few of you have asked to see my managerial profile and the progression. Some more detail of the transfers which we've got to look at the end of the Welsh window. So there's a little bit we've got to look at off the pitch. We'll do a coefficient update too. But quite frankly, the main news is that we're in the Europa League with these teams. Villarreal, Rio Ave of Portugal and Olympic Marseille. So two of those games are very, very difficult. And Rio Ave, perhaps one we might sneak a draw out of, you think, on paper. But then you go and look at Chris Willock and you think, oh, it might be a little bit harder than we thought. But we'll wait and see what happens on that front. Really good sides. It's going to be great to test ourselves, isn't it? That's something we've got to look forward to. We've got a tough tie at St Mirren in the SPFL Trust Trophy, so that's going to be interesting too. But after winning it last year, the pressure's off now. We don't have to focus so much. The League Cup we're still in. We've got Flint Town in that one. Should be a banker, but we've seen what's happened before against lower league opposition. And in the league, it's all going well after that shaky start. And in fact, Landudno not won a game all season, but they took a point off us. So let's have a quick look at the schedule to see how we've been getting on. Five games off camera since you were last with me. We had Cardiff Met Uni away from home, Dean, and Peter Blackburn with a 93rd minute winner. If you're wondering what that name means, it is a 15-year-old in the youth team who came in because we had no left-back options. He came off the bench, he scored a screamer. It was a cross-come shot. I don't know if he meant it, but he saved the day. And that 15-year-old, no matter what happens now, will be written into Bangor City folklore. You can't ask for much more. In September, you'll start to see some of the new names here. A 4-2 win at home to Newtown. Joe Duffy with a brace. Callum Maguire. And Martin Tranter off the bench again. You can see Blackburn made another appearance, as did the young midfielder Humphreys. But Tranter, gotta say it, he's got two goals in three league appearances for us. He might not be a great striker, but his determination is gradually improving. And he's starting to become a good player. So we'll wait and see what's made of him. A 2-0 win against Queen's Park in the SPFL Trust Trophy. A tight game. Joe Duffy with the early goal. But then Ian Brooks in second half stoppage time. Just as Queen's Park threw everyone forward. Made sure the tie was wrapped up. An away tie against Connors Key. A 4-0 victory in that one. A Max Dean hat-trick. And Dean Rogers, who he signed from Connors Key. We'll take a look at him in a moment. With a wonderful goal covering at left back. And in a 1-0 win against rivals Barla, it was Ben Cottrell with a late goal in the first half. And let's be honest, it was a pretty comfortable day at the office. Though George Wickens did have to make one brilliant save. The good news, season ticket sales are soaring. Everything else is starting to look good off the pitch. The bank balance, of course, fine. The junior coaching has been improved again. The facilities upgrades are going through now. But transfer history is where things got a little interesting. So on transfer deadline day, we made one signing and one sort of signing. So the signing was Dean Rogers from Connors Key. Now he's one of many well-rated youngsters at different teams in the Welsh League. We've had a brief look at Harry Gray at Barrytown. We've looked at Jack Owen at Carmarthen. They're all out of contract. They won't sign new deals with their current clubs. And they can't get a move elsewhere because the other teams don't want to pay this level of compensation. When most of the players in the league are worth next to nothing. So Dean Rogers was a good chance for us to get someone. They kept rejecting transfer bids so we had to do the compensation. I would have liked to have given them a bit more, but it's nearly £50,000, probably nearly a record transfer for the Welsh League. And Dean Rogers comes in from Connors Key. 
Natural centre-half, natural left-back. He's got two-star ability, three-star potential. Welsh under-19 international. He's just a very solid player. Gives us quality off the bench. He's playing full-time football now, so he's training well, and he will hopefully improve too. He's got the natural attributes to do all right here. He scored one in two. He's played nearly 150 league games between Barry and Connors Key. He's got so much potential, and also he can play both positions we needed cover. So that was a no-brainer. The second thing we did, if we go back to the squad, is bring back Ethan Form very early from his loan spell. Made one appearance at Lincoln City, but we couldn't get another fullback in. So he comes back, and he'll actually be our backup left back. So our backup defence is now Hankin and Vaughan as the fullbacks, with Rogers and Hughes centre half. It's not as strong as last year, but it's young, it's dependable, and hopefully in the league, it will continue to do pretty well. One of the biggest disappointments we had this summer, though, was regarding a youth player who was stolen by Tottenham Hotspur. Now, I don't even know if he shows up here. We've got one that was shown by Wolves, Owen McMinnamy. He was stolen, and he's 17 years of age. And you can see he's not going to be great, but he's got a little bit of ability. But there's also a 15-year-old from Tottenham, who I imagine will appear on here next year. I took a screenshot, so I'll post it on the screen now while I'm talking. And although it might work out better financially for us in the future... It's pointless us investing in our youth facilities and getting all of those things up to tip-top shape, like the recruitment and junior coaching, if we're then going to have things like that happen where we lose those kind of players because we need those to get into our youth academy. And that's something that hasn't happened yet. So we'll keep our eyes peeled on that, but there are a few starting to get big moves. I guess that's a reflection of how well we are junior coaching. We have got our youth recruitment set up. But fingers crossed as we increase our reputation, players would prefer to stay here. But as it is, we're in pretty good shape at the moment. The transfers look good. Everything else looks great. And the one thing you guys have been asking to see quite regularly is our manager profile. So as you can see, in terms of characteristics, we're becoming quite popular with a lot of managers and some big name ones as well, particularly the likes of Carlo Ancelotti, who of course stands out at the top as Manchester City manager. Otherwise, lots of ones in a Welsh game we're popular with and only one or two we're not. So Barra Faldi, if you remember, he was our goalkeeper in season one. He was never going to be happy because we forced him out. Daniel Farker, for some reason, doesn't like us at Norwich. I think because of the Jimmy Jarrett loan, where we supposedly didn't give him enough football and didn't play him in his preferred role. And in Quinton Fortune, he is a manager who was last at Portsmouth. And I can't really work out why he's unhappy with us. But either way, we're generally very popular and we've got to be quite pleased with that. But you wanted to see our attributes. I just wanted to show you what I was known for as well. Apparently, playing attacking football and defensive football explain that one to me, preferring a possession-based game, high tempo, signing reputation players, I'm not sure about that, I guess compared to the league perhaps, signing compatriots, signing younger players, I mean a lot of it is about younger players, and then preferring not to sign players late in their career, just because we don't get value out of them. But if we go and have a look at the attributes, we're sort of improving quite nicely now, bar adaptability because we've been stuck at one club, all of our mental attributes are up to sort of 9 or 10, which considering we've only got one coaching badge isn't bad going. And even some of our technical attributes and our coaching style is good. And of course we're excellent working with youngsters because we've been doing it all the time. But what we're going to do, we're going to apply for our second coaching badge. And we're going to go ahead and get into this game against Villarreal. It's going to be an absolutely massive tie. If we go and have a look at their squad, they've got a few players out injured. And a large selection of familiar names I would say. So Rafa Mir up front is one of them. 65 grand a week, world class. Paco Alcacer, we know him very well in real life, he's been at Valencia, Barcelona, Borussia Dortmund, now Villarreal, and he's top quality as well. Just declining physically at 33, but still a very good defender. Francis Coquelin, the former Arsenal man, he's very old as well now, but an excellent footballer. And there's so much other quality in the team. They're just world-class players. They've got an Argentinian international in goal. Jesus Corona at right back, 117 caps for Mexico. Patrick at centre-half, a well-known, established name at La Liga level. And I guess they are getting on a little bit now. There's a lot of an ageing squad there. But they're still high quality. And it's going to be very hard-pressed for us to beat them. But let's go and get into it. We might as well get the games out of the way. Because this is a great experience. We're going to go and pick our 11. See who's strongest. And I think this is as good as we can get. So we've gone for George Wickens in goal. Who continues to develop well off the pitch. We've got McDonald back at right back. Weaver on the left. Badebo and Alzabad at centre-half. Woods back in midfield alongside Luca Canel, who's just back from injury. Ian Brooks and Ben Cottrell. And then Dean and Duffy, 14 goals apiece up front. 
and it looks like they're on for another very big season. We've got quality on the bench, albeit not as strong defensively. We've got big games coming up, so the League Cup tie will rest everyone, so these boys can leave everything out there tonight. What do you think the score will be? Can we compete with a side that's that good? I just don't know. The only thing that can win it is youth, that pressing intensity, and maybe surprising them by being aggressive. First Europa League group game in this series, and let's see if we can make it a special Thursday night at the race course of Wrexham. Here we go then. Archie Wood's pleased to be back in the team. The front two, I'll be honest, the backups have been so disappointing recently when we've been playing in the league games. But we've got a real chance today. The midfield is refreshed. The strikers are refreshed. It's just about the back four. We've got warnings to close loads of people down because they're high quality footballers. We're going to tell the boys to pick up where they left off. And we've not got many of them motivated, which is a bit of a concern. We're going to start positive, although that's probably the biggest mistake we'll make. We'll see what formation Villarreal are playing. And then we'll make our judgment after the first five minutes. Into the first half we go. And we're straight from the kickoff as Duffy gets it wide to Weaver. On the left hand side, back to Badebo. Goes wide to Weaver. What a start this could be. Canel's lost out though. Francis Coquelin finds Rafa Mir. In midfield, picks it back to Pedraza. Over the top. Coquelin's got in there. Alzabad back. And Wickens clears it downfield. Duffy flicks on. And now Max Dean's in. What a start to the game. Dean drifts left to Ian Brooks. Gets down the wing. Cuts it inside to Duffy. Oh my word. We're ahead after 35 seconds against Villarreal. A brilliant start to the game. It could have been 1-0 at the other end. But instead, against another team matching up with an Arrow Diamond, we have had an absolutely blinding start. Bangor City 1, Villarreal 0. And the Europa League could be very, very special. Well, we've now got to 28 minutes without another highlight. As it is, they're clearing downfield as far as Badebo. But I tell you what, we've really rocked them by being on the front foot. Brooks can go left. I think Weaver had drifted offside. I don't like Badebo getting that high up the pitch. Weaver finds Duffy, who plays a 1-2. Through towards Cottrell. He's in again. It's a good save by Ruli. The Argentinian international down to his right. And the only two highlights we've seen here are our goal and another very good chance. Ten minutes to half time. It's been a stunning performance. Marseille lead against Rio Ave. They're 1-0 up there as well. And this could be a very big turn up for the books. We are thoroughly deserving of our lead at half time. It is Bangor 1, Villarreal 0. And we've got to tell the boys to keep it up because that was simply magnificent. We've got the lads inspired. We've got them motivated. Now we just need the legs to last 90. And we've got a throw in on the right with McDonald early in the second half. Canel flicks it on and it's headed out of the box as far as Francis Coquelin. Gets it wide to Mir. Woods in with a good tackle. Excellent anchor man play. It's exactly what you want from the base of the diamond. Pedraza gets it back at left back. Finds Sassares all the way back to his keeper, Ruli. Oh, Duffy nearly caught him out. It's flicked on. Who's going to get there? Yes, Dem Weaver is the man. And I think you've got to bear in mind, considering how much we rely on our fullbacks now, to have them as probably our, and arguably our best two players, to be honest. It really is a turn up for the books. Duffy loses out in the air to Patrick, but Weaver wins it back. Goes down the left to Duffy again. Drifted wide, but goes back to Weaver. Holds it up well for Brooks. Inside to Dean. Time to turn. Here's Cottrell unmarked. And Ben Cottrell has made it 2-0 to Bangor City. The Villarreal fans in the away end, head in their hands. They're coming to a place they've never been before. And they did not expect this scoreline. What a performance. We're top of the group as it stands. And we'll go and make some changes in a moment. Excellent performance. Excellent effort. This has been beyond our wildest dreams. And we're back with 18 minutes to go. As Duffy gets on the end of a long ball down the left wing. Weaver gets it again. Crosses in towards Cannell. Coquelin heads away as far as Woods. Chips it left to Weaver. A brilliant ball. Three in the middle. Four coming in. Cannell's there. Duffy's there. And he's missed from six yards. Straight at the keeper. Unbelievable miss. And now it's a Villarreal corner. What a game this has turned into. Tecalto puts the corner in. In swinger. To the front post. Patrick unmarked. Dean hacks it behind for a corner. I'm going to take Luca Canell off. Just because he looks knackered. Benson and Clifton are the more defensive minded. So Clifton will come on for now. We will replace Wood soon as well. Because he's only just coming back from injury. And McDonald's had a poor one at right back. So we'll think about that too. As the corner's in again. Woods heads away. Cottrell can counter here. Can we make it three? This would be incredible. Cottrell goes down the right. The highlight ends. And what a performance. There's a few tired legs out there. So we're going to take McDonald off at right back for Jack Hankin. 
I'm also going to make the change we made in the Champions League a lot. I'm going to bring Benson on, or maybe Williams. Which one's better? Williams, three star, but a natural playmaker. And Benson is two and a half star. So it's going to be Williams on for Ben Cottrell. What we're going to do then is we're going to leave the two box to box. We're going to put Williams in the middle. You've seen us do this countless times. Deep line playmaker on support. The wing backs are going to drop to a defensive duty. Both Hankin and Weaver doing the same. We're going to drop to a balance mentality. We're going to confirm the changes because this could be a very special night. Nine minutes to go. Through ball goes all the way to Wickens. Another great night between the sticks. And with five to go, I could never have seen this coming. But it's not over yet as Tuccini picks it up. Oh, great effort from distance. Just over the bar. And I tell you what, I think it's time now for the time wasting. We're going to get them to be more disciplined. We're going to make sure we don't concede any ground. We're going to slow it down. We're going to hold our shape. We're going to drop the line of engagement. Drop the defensive line. And fingers crossed, we can just see it out. We're not going to press the keeper. We'll press from the back. But there's been a lot of set pieces here. Alzabad heads another one away. Takalto picks it up. 25 yards out. Beats the defender. Shot straight at Wickens. We are fighting so hard back there. They're pressing everything. They're working their backsides off. But they're conceding a lot of set pieces. And that one may have cost us. But Wickens with a stunning save. I'm not sure about the marking at the back stick. But the keeper's there. But Debo reacts first. And it is a gargantuan effort. What a set of defenders these have been. Weaver's been sensational. But Debo's solid. Wickens dependable. And even Hankins putting effort in off the back. Alzabad's been a tower aerial. He's won everything back there. But they're still coming forward on the left. Pedraza cuts in. Crosses, but Debo's there for the umpteenth time. Dean finds Duffy. Now, can we counter? A third would really wrap it up and start the party. Gets into the box. Drifts left, though. Cuts it back in. Clifton's there. Heads just over the bar. But crucially, it's another 20 seconds seen out. And we're just three minutes from a historic result. No further highlights. No further action. Bangor City 2. Villarreal 0. A clean sheet against a side of this quality. A wonderful effort defensively. And you've got to be so, so proud. Who ever saw this coming at the start of the day? Because it certainly wasn't me. We're playing a strike force earning 200 grand a week. With God knows how many international caps between them. The Argentina number two in goal. It's a wonderful effort. Marseille win by four. They were spectacular against Rio Ave. But it does give us some hope for the home game against the Portuguese side. And if we can get six points, that might wrap us up third place. Now, I wasn't expecting to qualify from this group because of Marseille and Villarreal. We'll wait and see on that. But that result, and if we can get one against the Portuguese side, may wrap us up third place. And that means the Europa Conference after Christmas. The more we're in European competitions, the more rounds we get into. Doesn't matter at which level, it builds the coefficient. So a brilliant win, a brilliant performance. Let's go and see what it does to the bank balance. So interestingly, the board won't let us take a coaching course. Not even an option to try and win them round, really. But this is the big moment. Bangor City win. They increase the coefficient points for Wales. They bring in £520,000. Yeston Weaver, what a signing he's been at the back. Better than Jimmy Jarrett. It came out of a poor situation and we got ourselves a wonderful footballer. An excellent effort, a brilliant performance and we're just in a great shape at the moment. The Welsh League is slowly trying to catch up. They're putting that little bit of effort in. They're getting some loan players from England. They're getting some free agents that have played there. And touch wood, that can mean positives for the future. TNS sharing their youngsters out. They're playing in the Welsh League now too. But the likes of Dan Griffiths, a good player at this level, goes into Landudno. The likes of West Brom's Joe Harvey, loaned out to Lynetley. Not great players, but it's the market they're working in that makes the difference. The best one of the lot... Ollie Evans from Birmingham to Barrytown United. Brilliant young Welsh striker. Look at the attributes. 17 finishing. I think he has been there on loan before, but not for a couple of seasons. In fact, it's Carmarthen he was at. So a bit later in his development, Birmingham give him a chance. And with a hat-trick on his first start, it's just whether Barrytown can keep him after this loan spell. But some really positive signs. There's a lot more transfer activity. There's a gradual increase in the standard. And you can see TNS bringing in players from Scotland, from England. They're really trying to make it happen. And as it stands, if we can keep getting these teams performing, we can keep giving them money. Hopefully, one or two more will be professional before long. I'm really interested in sticking this out and just seeing what happens with the other sides. We're catching up in terms of the reputation. Everything's moving along nicely. And you can see by the coefficients of the nations, as you've seen here, 
Wales are doing brilliantly at national level. We obviously rejected the job the first time. Mark Hughes back in charge. We probably wouldn't reject it next time in truth. But they're doing a really good job. They did well in the World Cup. Got all the way to the quarterfinals where they lost to Argentina. They're doing well in the European group stages. They're in Division A here. All right, they've got a lucky draw with Slovakia. They seem to have the better of Croatia. It's just whether they can topple Germany. But a really good side, doing very well. They've done brilliantly in World Cup qualifiers, of course, to get to the World Cup. They got to the European Championships last time. So they have got a history now of big competitions in succession. And we've just got to build the reputation of the domestic competitions, which we're going to be the most important part of. In terms of club coefficients, we are gradually moving up. We're now 38th place. We've overtaken Northern Ireland, which is interesting, particularly in terms of scouting for the UK once the other nations get there. And every year, we're losing our worst year. So we're losing our final year in the naught points this season. And next year, we'll earn plenty more because we've already got 2.875 this year. And you can see 16 as it stands takes us up another four or five places. We've got to get into that top 30 soon. And that's why what we do this season is so important. Because if we can get them into the top 30, it means that the other side start in a second qualifier of the Europa Conference. The qualification places show that. Currently in 38th with those four spots. Nothing changes till we get to 30th. Once we get to 30th, we get a slight increase. And then from 29th up, it's a lot easier. So that's our target. We'll certainly be chasing that over the next few weeks. Let's have a look at the schedule for when we're going to be back though. We go away to Rio Ave next. So we're going to leave that one out. What we're going to do is come back for the big games. So we've got that run of three league games in a row after St. Mirren and with Marseille in the middle. So we're going to show the home game against Marseille. We'll do the three home games like we did before. And then we'll show either Barry or TNS, dependent on which one's doing better at the time. And then the one after that will be the final group game against Rio Ave. And in fact, we've got Barry straight after that. So we'll show Marseille and TNS next time, Rio Ave and Barry the time after that. And we hope we can get some more joy in Europe. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be thrilling. And hopefully, there's going to be some more memorable nights. But if you did enjoy this episode, that unbelievable effort against Villarreal, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Let me know what you think about all the stuff off the pitch as well. We are gradually becoming top class in terms of facilities. And hopefully, we'll be able to attract Greta players. We'll be able to improve the nation like we did with Dean Rogers. And just be able to give some clubs some money and filter it down. If you want to stay up to date and see how that goes, and of course what our youth intake is going to be like this year, please do subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. You'll get alerts as daily content releases from two long-term stories, a massive one in the head coach yesterday, and it will shape what season seven will start like next time. So make sure you're up to date. It really is a thrilling climax, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I am. You can catch up with all the playlists in the eye above, including a live stream series with Dundee United and the podcast channel as well. We're closing in on a thousand subscribers over there and there's loads of football content. So if you haven't yet, please do give it a try and thank you so, so much for your ongoing support. A massive thanks for watching this one. I do appreciate it greatly as always. You're my 12th man in Europe and we need some more big results. So hopefully I'll see you next time to find out if we can get them.